Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out the alpha version of a game called The Indie Dungeon by developers Timberwolf Games. This is something maybe a little bit of a conglomeration, uh, something more familiar combined with something new. And I think fans of stuff uh, like Terraria, Minecraft, and maybe a little bit of Spelunky might get something pretty entertaining out of this one. So I think it is worth showing off even its somewhat early state. And I do have a few criticisms for it, but we will be going through those uh, in just a moment here. I've played about five minutes or so of this just to get... Uh, the very first idea of what it is that I'm doing, but I'm going to go through the the early stages of the game here with you, and we're going to run through the tutorials and see how it goes. So here we go. New game. There aren't really any options to look at, so we're just going to start it off. Uh, dear nephew, if you are reading this, it's most likely that I've passed on. I've left the, de uh, the deed to my land. And in your hands, grow old, have a family, and live in peace. I just ask of you one thing. Do not enter the doorway at the end of the island. Sincerely, Grandpa Nick. Hey, there you go. Little synchronicity there. Uh, so then, at this point, it asks me if I want to log in with Game Jolt, which is a little strange since it asks that in a pop-up window outside of the actual game window. I'm going to say no because, uh, as much as I like Game Jolt, I'm just not going to bother with that. And then there's an option to play in hard mode, which I'm also going to say no to because the game's actually pretty hard as it is. So then we've got our little intro. Uh, fade, and then we are actually right in the game in the tutorial mode. So we're going to press A and D to move, press W to jump, and you'll start to get an idea of the aesthetic that we're looking at. I think it's something pretty reminiscent of the original uh, Spelunky game, at least that would be my guess. Uh, some items can be broken, evidently, so let's see what we can do about that. Well, I think I passed by a whole bunch... Okay, I passed a whole bunch of little uh, cues here, so we're going to see if we can perhaps uh, fix that. Press I to access the inventory. And we've got a pickaxe and a potion. We're going to take our pickaxe, put it in our left hand. Or, or our right hand. I'm not sure it really matters. I think it just corresponds with the uh, which mouse button you want to hit. Uh, and so this is a thing that I would probably address as the if I was the developer of this game. I would probably make it so these prompts uh, don't just pass the second you walk past that tile. I understand, though, it's a little tempting, probably, since this is made in Game Maker. Uh, you want to use maybe one of these tiles as sort of like a cue to tell... Uh, to easily script when these uh, sequences pop up. So in the future, maybe I would have that be something you dismiss before the next one can happen or something like that. Uh, so then it says, put the pickaxe in a hand. I mean, if you just think about it, like, who's going to stop on each tile and read each thing? You just, you're going to walk naturally to the right. Uh, some items can be broken. We've now got a pickaxe, and we broke it. And we got some kind of uh, loot, it looks like. Maybe some gold or bronze or something. So we can mine through blocks. Those are added to our inventory and are now... Uh, things that we can use again. Uh, these, however, can not be mined. So this one here with this, uh, I guess, ivy pattern or whatever on it. This one, though, we can mine. And let's see if we can jump over. There we go. Uh, is this a thing? No, okay. So it's demonstrating all three of these types of blocks are things I cannot mine. Uh, so I can press T to toggle modes. That puts us in block mode. And I can actually also press B to bring up a block menu where I can then select... Uh, which of these blocks I'd like to use, and that looks like our uh, list here of all the things we can do. We can left-click to create a block, right-click to create a wall, and uh, this is one of the few places I think we could use maybe a little bit of streamlining in the UI department. Uh, so that's like a background if you right-click, and then a wall, or a, an actual tile if you left-click. Uh, but I would probably streamline some of that stuff. The fact that you have to go through a B to get to the block menu, and I to get to the inventory menu. You can't go to one from the other, so you have to actually back out. Uh, I think this would be much better suited to be like a right arrow here takes you to the next side of this t uh, block or something, or maybe just have tabs in the corner. Uh, that would probably make it a little bit easier to navigate through. Because uh, I found myself in a position when I was trying this uh, for the first time, like I didn't really understand what to do. Like I didn't have any more blocks, and it didn't seem like I could click anywhere, so I, I kind of forgot that B was a thing, and I kept going to my inventory and there wasn't anything there. So that would kind of take care of that problem. So lava and acid will damage you. So we've got, here's our introduction to uh, different states of matter, I suppose. Uh, we've got acid here, which I'm going to hop right over. Uh, the controls are a little bit early yet. I feel like they could use some, uh, some work as well. We're going to mine for some amethyst, I suppose. There's some nice uh, particle effects, which I really like. And it, on the whole, I really do enjoy uh, the look of this game. I think it's quite cute. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of like something like Spelunky meets Tiny Plumbers, uh, both games that I enjoyed very much. I can press S here to, up, or to open that, uh, which seems like, again, we're maybe dealing with a, a lot of different buttons already, but at the same time, I think that probably the nuances uh, necessitate something like that to be 
Uh, it's something we can do. So let's open up all these blocks, get all the loot out of them. And I think something amazing will happen once I get all the last loot. Uh, also, you have to click each time you want to mine, which I think probably makes more sense to do the Terraria style. I believe you can just hold down the button in that. Alright, so uh, we were paused because we got to level up. And I don't know that we can look at this menu outside of when we level, so that's a little weird to me. I, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I didn't see a way to get to, like, your status screen. Uh, which would be another thing that maybe just put it under the I menu, get it all together, group it. Uh, so that we have access to all of the different UI stuff that you're going to need in your journey. Uh, so level up says we can upgrade one of the following. Health, attack, defense, or speed. Uh, well, I could really use a little bit of all of them. I'm going to say, in this case, though, let's level up our attack. Be a little bit more on the offensive side. Alright, so now we've got... I just picked up a grappling hook. We can, uh... Oh, the grapple hood. Alright, so there's a typo there. I'm going to probably address that. And was there... Oh, there's actually some stuff underneath, but when we stand on this spot right here where the, uh, the help menu needs to come up, it actually blocks that. Uh, so you could easily pass that up if you didn't realize that that was there. So we'll mine down a little bit, because why not, I guess. And I want to see if any of these blocks can be, uh, you know, manipulated with gravity. Like, will this fall? No. Okay, I guess not. I'm still learning about this as I go, because this is still basically my first time through. Alright, so we, uh, we can only jump one tile up, which is something we've got to keep in mind. Uh, kind of an important factor. Uh, but then again, I can build again, so if I find myself trapped, I can always grapple, or I can build a path back out. Uh, there are still options for us. And I don't believe it works exactly like in Minecraft, where you have to like have certain items, uh, like certain types of mine picks to get through certain types of blocks. And there we go, we've equipped our grappling hook, and that works sort of like a hook shot from Zelda. Uh, so we'll just shoot to this block there, and that should put us in the position to grab whatever that is. Uh, making sure we don't land in the lava, as being as careful as possible. There we go, crossing another crevasse, and we've got... I think these are actually slightly randomized, because last time I was here, I don't remember there being any minerals or materials over here on this side. Alright, cool, so there's actually another one way down there. I don't think I really feel like digging that deeply to get it, though. So let's leave the dungeon, and that will put us here, uh, which is, I guess, our normal, like, our town that we can walk around and build a life in. I saw some item drop down here, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, defense plus three, I think that just said. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the status is as far as randomization. I think there is some sort of a hybridized thing going on where maybe some of the item placements are randomized right now, but I don't know that the geometry is actually randomized. Uh, this town, of course, is exactly the same as it was last time I saw it, but we can trade with this NPC if we want. Uh, we can get a bow for 2,000 coin. I have 91 right now, and I've got a couple of inventory items, uh, potions namely, and a hat on my head, as well as the two items you saw that I've equipped already. Uh, we could throw a save in, just because, and let's just move on. So we can talk to this NPC to sell all our loot. Uh, we can get a trophy, apparently, by opening that chest. I'm not sure why we got that. And we can enter the house, and I guess, can I talk to this NPC? No, apparently not. Uh, let's break through all of this stuff. Did that bit of gold just land in the wall? Oh, okay, I just had to jump. Alright, let's trade, uh, what do you have for sale? Can't really see, okay, the, uh, tooltip was not popping up at first. I think there's still a little bit of an issue occasionally with some of the UI stuff. Uh, scuba helm? Chinaman's hat? Uh, a whip for 125 coins? I think I do want that, actually. Or a copper sword. Uh, maybe we should go for the whole Spelunky experience. Let's grab the whip, and we'll put that in place of our grapple hook, I suppose, for the moment. Oh, I have to put this down first before I can equip something else. There we go. I probably should have picked the sword, to be honest, but, you know, it's fine. I also like that little detail when your character jumps that the hat sort of, like, falls back down onto his head. Alright, so we can whip. Oh, it's got a nice crack to it. And on the other side of this uh, wall of particles, I'm not sure exactly why it's here, uh, there seems to be some sort of an item or, or a building that says down on it. Uh, and I can't mine through these blocks, as we've learned. So I guess the only option I really have is to head back in the other direction. Uh, which, uh, I don't know if I can do that either. Oh, okay, right, I have to hit down. Uh, yeah, so that's a thing that I might also address as well, that, you know, if you walk to this item or this area, that maybe you could just seamlessly... Uh, make that transition. I know there is a way to do that with Game Maker, where you can just teleport based on the tile, uh, or even just have a little confirmation uh, window that pops up, or 
Uh, maybe just be like continue walking for two seconds like you go off the side of the screen uh, the camera stops where it stops and then you continue to walk if you do continue to walk it'll just fade to the next room uh, throw a coin for luck okay so wherever I decide to press that because uh, I press S to activate it and then it'll activate a pop-up menu uh, which is kind of really awkward and also breaks the frame rate of the game so uh, yeah I would also I would address some of that stuff as well uh, if you're gonna make this you know, one of the things you could do to polish it, I should say, as you move into, like, the beta phase of this is to uh, work on little details like that. We're having, like, a, a totally unskinned, like, little UI pop-up menu that looks like it doesn't really belong in the game. Oh, there is a bat coming out of the water. Uh, okay, apparently it's not hindered by geometry whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to end up needing more hands, apparently, so we're going to probably want to have some sort of a quick swap. Uh, because right now, having to pick between... The mine pick, the grappling hook, and the whip, which are all items that have different purposes, seems a little bit unwieldy to me, or unwieldy. Uh, can I get up to... is there something up above? There is fall damage, I know that much, so I don't really want to fall too far, but... Okay, it looks like it's, it's fine. We'll just uh, do a little bit of exploring here. This is uh, totally a different looking dungeon than what I saw last time. So I guess maybe there is more randomization than I thought. I don't see an oxygen meter either, which uh, sort of worries me a little bit. Just in case I'm doing it wrong and maybe I'm about to die. Our character strikes me as a, a human, so I would think uh, oxygen would be a thing, but I don't know. Maybe there's uh, still some features not yet implemented. And now I have to switch back, uh, and again I have to take the whip out of the slot before I can do that. And uh, let's do a little bit of tinking onto the walls here if we could. And I want to see what this material is, because it doesn't quite look like anything I've seen before. Alright, just loot, apparently. I'm not sure still what it is, but oh well. And I guess now I've just got a little platform. If I wanted to, I could go into uh, build mode and build some of these sections back out, so that way I don't have to necessarily go through the water. Uh, it was that T, right? And then we'll just cross... Oh, can I... Oh, it looks like I can stack all my blocks on the same tile. I didn't really want to do that at all. Um, I don't want that, I want that. And I think it should be probably that you could take the, uh, the item mode to switch to build mode, make it like middle mouse or something, uh, just for the sake of convenience. So just have something to, like, streamline the fact that you've got Q, or W, A, S, D, which all do things, then you got B, I, and T, which is basically all over the whole keyboard. So you want to bring that stuff together, I would say. Um, and what else do I want to do? I think I just wanted to go back to build mode. And undoubtedly, if I spent a bunch of time with this, it would probably become a lot more streamlined feeling. Uh, and I guess that's fine the way it is. It'd make a little bridge. And let's switch back to T, to item mode. Pick up some gold, evidently. So this is where the Spelunky influence is undoubtedly coming from. Uh, the fact that you're running around, digging for stuff, looking for stuff, and, and trying to survive against, you know, bats and spiders and the like. Uh, what's over here? We've got some sort of a pot. Oh, I just got a stat up, evidently, and I can leave the dungeon, uh, which I believe will re-roll what it is that we're going to get next time. Uh, so the dungeon, as far as right now, is pretty small. So one question I did want to ask, uh, and I, I'm not sure if uh, the developers will necessarily respond, but I am curious to know, how, like, what's up behind, what's came uh, of the name, the Indie Dungeon? Uh, are we sort of poking reference, or making a reference towards the fact that we're sort of conglomerating a bunch of different concepts that we may have seen in other indie games? Or is there like an actual not self-referential reason that we're using the word indie here? Uh, or are we just totally self-aware? I'm not sure. But that sort of stuff makes me curious. Uh, collision is a little awkward here, as we've noticed. Uh, we can sort of fly up into this next block. It looks like only the bottom half of our body actually collides with surfaces. Uh, which may be a good thing, because it means that the character can exist in sort of a, a non-standard form, uh, as far as his height. And I'm curious if there are upgrades to the mining pick that will let us uh, break through surfaces faster. And I'm also a little curious as to what exactly these different materials are going to mean for me, if there's like any kind of crafting or anything. Oh, okay, well we're getting HP from our XP anyway. Uh, so let's upgrade our speed, because I think I want to move a little bit faster through this environment. Um, also, that the sound of the wave moving every time I like move through the water, I'm not sure it's necessary. 
I mean, maybe occasionally, but not all the time. Uh, let's go back to block mode. We should be able to build up. And out of block mode, item mode says let's break through this. Uh, I feel like also the fact that our crosshair uh, exists just as a square, but the only spot that we're really concerned with is like the very center. Uh, makes me sort of say, like, look, we, we want to maybe mine this block, right? But it doesn't actually do anything until I'm dead centered on that block. So, uh, oh, although that time it did. Not sure why. Um, I would consider maybe making this into more of a, a center-based thing. Maybe just have an actual crosshair, like a, you know, a, a plus sign instead of the block. But I understand maybe you can't see as well, but I would uh, just change it so it's maybe a little transparent or something. Because right now the focus being on the uh, the outside edges of the block, I understand you want to center the thing in it, but it just doesn't quite read that way to me. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. And of course, everything I'm saying, just take with a grain of salt. These are just one man suggestions. Uh, if anyone has different suggestions, uh, I'm definitely uh, or different opinions on the the factors. I would love to hear them, uh, which is why we've got a comment section. So I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, so let's leave the dungeon. And what is this this pestilence that's spinning around. So I guess we've uh, finished accumulating what we wanted to accumulate for this. What can we trade here? Anything? Still got a bow, uh, which is very expensive. Copper armor. I didn't have that before. I guess we'll put that on. Can I put that on? Yeah, I can. Does that change the appearance of our character? Oh, it does, in fact. So maybe a little bit more Terraria influence in that. Well, I mean, not that Terraria owns the concept of having characters with uh, armor on, but it just seems like it's the most uh, fresh in my memory anyway of a uh, a thing that used that concept. Uh, so we've got 157 money. I kind of want to just like sell. Oh, I can sell this for four gold coins. And again, we've got a pop up that exists outside of the window. Uh, so that's another thing. Like, this probably needs to be integrated into the UI of the actual game. And the resolution is another thing. Like, the fact that this is very, very small. Um, I understand why it was probably done, but I don't know. It, it seems to me like you would want to just blow up the resolution a little bit and use some of the room that you just created to put the game's UI into those spaces. So even if the game actually, like, where it exists as far as the rendering of the structures, uh, if you were to modularize that and put it within a larger framework, like a persistent UI, uh, then you could move the item mode and the, the stuff at the top of the screen over to a place that isn't actually obscuring vision. Uh, that seems like a thing that would probably make sense. And then also these uh, text prompts should probably exist outside of the frame of uh, vision within the actual uh, the, the screen. Because when you're trying to navigate like a, a dungeon or something, it can be a little bit off-putting to have there be monsters maybe that exist within where the UI is prompting you, or where your health bar might be, and you just don't want to make mistakes based on that. It just seems a little frustrating. Uh, so this space right here that we're standing in, we could, if we want to, uh, switch to build mode, or block mode, and pick some kind of tile, whatever it is that we're enjoying at the moment, and we could build a little house out of it, I suppose. Uh, we could build a background with a few of these by right-clicking, and then we could actually build an outer wall, uh, but I'm not aware of there being anything as far as uh, doors yet, so there might still need to be a little bit more uh, in that department. And again, it looks like I created two blocks in the same space, so that probably shouldn't happen. Uh, and I've had it be a little bit finicky where I place things, like sometimes it just doesn't quite register that I'm allowed to place something there. Uh, this being one of those cases, unless I just ran out of tiles, which is entirely possible. But it seemed like that just happened a moment ago, and then I could place again. Alright, I did in fact run out of tiles, so maybe, uh, that's fine. Can I put one of these? Okay, I can, but it totally changes the look of the thing, and now it's just sort of awful. Uh, can't place anything again. Maybe it just doesn't like this corner. Uh, I don't know. I'm not actually sure how to deal with uh, some of these issues. And again, the game is in alpha, so I really can't be all that upset about it. You can actually mine through the walls, though, so uh, if you make a mistake, it's pretty easy to correct. So I guess with that, we've probably reached about as far as we need to go with the indie dungeon. I could just jump into another uh, dungeon here and see what this one looks like. And it's a pretty different layout, actually. Uh, and this one looks like it's trying to force us through a little bit more of a linear passage, which is totally cool with me. A uh, little awkward jumping down because I'm not sure where I'm going to land. Can I... Oh, all right. How do I grapple along a situation like this? Very carefully, I suppose. And uh, I may have died, but fear not. This is a testing version. So I guess I died, and I guess I don't need to be worried about it because this is an alpha version and uh, didn't really have any consequences. But maybe in the full version you might lose something for it. Uh, it's a little anticlimactic how quickly the lava can kill you, especially when you don't have particularly great uh, control over your character. 
But I suppose as the game gets further toward release, those would be issues that might get addressed or uh, smoothed out a little bit. Should we throw a coin in for luck? How many coins do we want? A hundred coins. Here, have a hundred coins. Um, nothing happened. Alright, well, <laughs> that'll be that for the Indie Dungeon. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to check it out yourself. It is totally free at this point. Uh, it is available for download in the description of this video, and I'd love to hear your opinions. What would you like to see different, or what would need to be smoothed out or polished as we go toward a uh, possible beta version? I'm not sure exactly what the trajectory is as far as development, or how long it's actually been in development, so there is a chance that we're still very early in alpha. Uh, but still, I always am kind of interested in hearing what everybody's different takes on these types of concepts are, so feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, what did you think of the video as well? If you enjoy the video, be sure to leave any support that you don't mind leaving. If, you, uh, if you'd if you like to leave a like, of course, I do welcome those, and I'm a, a very appreciative of them. Uh, but just in general, anything you'd like to talk about as far as this game, I'd love to hear about it. Um, go try it yourself, though, if you can, uh, just so you have a feeling of what exactly uh, it is that you're getting into. Uh, it's one thing to watch a video and listen to somebody talk about it, but I think it always uh, is better to get, you know, first-hand information, if possible. And I should probably save, right, since we're about to end here. I might want to pick this up another time later if it gets further on in development. I had this chest also one time just reseal itself and be full of loot again, so I'm kind of wondering why that happened. I'm also wondering why I can't go through here, but maybe this is just blocked off for the time being since it's still in alpha mode. Uh, or an alpha version, anyway. So, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to check out my social media information in the description, as well as the game link itself. Uh, if you'd like to check out more in the series, I've got over 500 other games that I've made videos for in the series, which you can browse over at indie-impressions.com. They're all neatly tagged and categorized for your perusal, so if you want to find a specific type of game, or a specific genre, or payment style for a game, uh, that would be the place you could do that. And I would love to hear again your feedback on it. And I think that'll pretty much do it, guys. So be sure to come back again tomorrow. Uh, new episodes are every single day on my channel, youtube.com slash rockleysmile. So I hope to see you here. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I also hope you have a great night. So I will talk to you later. Later, guys. Just want to throw in a little quick addendum. Uh, when I went to quit the game, I realized pressing escape actually brings me to a uh, stat screen that I was looking for that I didn't actually realize was here. So uh, kind of an important screen. Uh, it never really was tutorialized that it exists, and but I mean, a lot of people should probably run into it at some point, just given on the fact that you'll eventually hit escape. Uh, but I'm pretty used to a lot of games that I play ending up uh, where escape will actually just uh, boot you from the game. So a lot of the time I don't press escape unless I absolutely need to, and in this case, uh, quitting the game was my impetus to do so. Uh, and there are all the names for all the different minerals and stuff that I had picked, out, uh, picked up through the course of this uh, few moments that we spent with the game. So, uh, important thing I thought I would mention, I, I wanted to head off the comments before everybody got upset that I didn't actually mention that. This is kind of an important thing to note. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, there's the stat screen, and now I know. So, see you later again, guys!